Hi and welcome to my channel. I'm Simon of Savage Reads and I'm joined again by my mum. Hello. We're on the roof <laughs> in Italy. Imagine <laughs> we're having to use our own bodies to cover up satellite dishes behind Indeed. us. But we're going to be back to talk about the Women's Prize Long List 2019 and how we are getting on with it. Yeah. Combined, we've read all of them, I think, or at least read some of all of them. Yeah. What I'm going to do on Instagram is on the, on Sunday, after this has gone live, I will share my favourite six that I would have as my shortlist and then you might share on Twitter do the same if I can some work of your favourites. I'll link both my Instagram and Mum's Twitter down below. So, how have you found the long list so far? I'm really enjoying it. It's incredibly varied, which is what I've really liked about it. And it was like Christmas one day because Mum suddenly got a box of all of the long list, didn't you? Yeah, I did. It was very exciting. I've never had a big book delivery like that before, ever. It's like Christmas. It was. <laughs> for book lovers. It was. We're not going to go on for too long because obviously there's 16 books to get through. But first up, number one, which my sister is currently reading, yeah. um, is Pat Barker's The Silence of the Girls, which you love, 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 love this book. I really I like loved it this book. I really loved it. Why do you love it? I loved it because um, it's a retelling of a classical story, so it's the Iliad of Homer. It's the beginning, isn't it, of the Iliad? Yeah, well, and it um, it focuses on a character in the story who is basically voiceless and gives her a voice. Um, Briseis. 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 She's a slave girl, so you're also getting a, a sort of slave girl's perspective on a female perspective, but also the perspective of somebody who has been of high status but has become a slave. Um, yeah, she was queen before she was enslaved. And um, and I just I just I thought it was beautifully written. The language is is superb and it's you know the Iliad is a book that I really love and have a very strong affection for. She didn't intrude on any of my feelings about the story at all. In you fact, really like the depiction of yeah, I Achilles, felt, don't you? I do. Reading it enhanced my understanding of the original text, which I think is a very good oh, wow. thing to do. I yeah. really, really, really liked it. My only slight quibble with it, and it is a slight one, but I'm going to mention it nonetheless, is the fact that I was expecting the whole book to be, because of the title, the Silence of the Girls, I was expecting the whole book to be in the voice of Briseis, 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 yeah, Briseis yeah, can't do it any time, um, but it does switch into Achilles quite often, or his or Patroclus, and that slightly lessened the impact for me right, a little okay, bit. That's the only thing that I would yeah. say about it. Um, I just wanted it to constantly be her voice, but obviously she couldn't be everywhere all the time because, no. and that must be quite tricky when people are doing classical myth retellings and retelling them again, and um, because you've got to stick to what is kind of not necessarily. I mean, the ancient Greeks themselves um, didn't always respect. Oh, really? Yeah, there wasn't a sort of canon, as it were. Well, that's book number one. Yeah. Number two, I've written notes down there, that's why I'm looking at it. <laughs> so, not just have my own feet. So, number two is Remembered by Yvonne Battlefelton, which is probably my favourite of the long list so far. And it starts off when a woman called Spring is going to see her son, who's been involved in a trolley accident in Philadelphia in 1910. Not a shopping trolley. Not a shopping trolley. <laughs> like a tram trolley. Yeah. Um, and she goes there and then whilst he is lying there unconscious her sister appears as a ghost and then they start to tell him their story which is also his story mm -hmm. and you go back generations to slavery and then the um, emancipation of slaves and i thought it was amazing it did everything that i loved about sing and buried sing and also um ruby by uh, Cynthia Bond, Singing Very Sing was by Jasmine Ward, but kind of in a really condensed way. I loved all the haints, I loved all the sort of legendy, magical realism all around it, but also the way it describes slavery and, mm. and how, what it's like when you are free and how you deal with freedom. Yes, I mean, that, that for me was the most interesting perspective of the book, actually, was the transition from, I didn't, I'd never really, sadly, I'd never really thought about how that might feel. And I thought, I thought that was handled very well. And I, it's interesting, it's one of those books that I think I sort of read it at the wrong time. So I found it quite hard to... Occasionally I'd get a bit confused mm. and a bit muddled, but I think that was me rather than the book. Um, and it's really lingered with me actually, a lot of the sort of the settings and the, the characters and the whole sort of situation in the hospital have really sort of stayed with me. The more I think about it, the more I like it. Yeah. And, and I think it, that's weird about reading sometimes, how books sort of 
settles in your head. I enjoyed it when I read it, and then the more and more time I've had away from it, the better and better and better. I think mm. it, it's a story that's grown in my brain. It's like a fine wine. It's yeah. matured. Well, I wouldn't know. I don't drink anymore. <laughs> anyway, then we had My Sister the Serial Killer, which we both read and both really, really like. We did, I, don't we? Really? I absolutely love it. I love both the characters because there's Karodi and there's Ayula. Yeah. And I just love how... Well, it's just... It's kind of one of those clever books, I think, where it has... Because um, you can guess from the title, it's about a woman whose sister is a serial killer. <laughs> Not that that gives anything away. Um, but what I loved about it was the depth that it had. So it is this, this thriller about a, a girl who is a, well, whose sister is a serial Except killer. Except it isn't really that at all. Well, no, it's you know not. What I mean? there's, there's a good, but there's, there's a good, so plot many different. layers behind yeah, it going yeah, on, and yeah, also like why are they, why is their relationship like it is? But it also looks at what constitutes beauty, yeah. and if you're beautiful on the outside, are you beautiful inside? Yeah. There's so much going on. Yeah. Sorry, and it's there's there's romance in there as well, um, and it's funny, you know, it's witty, and I think the writing is excellent. You know, I really. There's not a word that's misplaced in that book, I don't think. And I, I loved it because I've got two sisters. And, um, Neither of them are serial killers. And, I, and actually, that was one thing that Connected remembered as well, because, of course, that's about, you know... Siblings. The, the siblings. Yeah. Um, but I thought the thing about that was, you know, that question of how far would your loyalty to your sister take you, I thought was really, really interesting, and it left me questioning my own kind of relationships with my sisters That's and what I may or may not be prepared to do. <laughs> there are a few things which I can't mention because there'd be spoilers, mm. but, but a few sort of detail. The attention to detail is fantastic. And yet it's all done in a very slim volume. It's it very is, compact. yeah. Nothing's yeah. wasted. Um, and I thought for a debut novel as well, I know that's yeah. such a cliche to say for a debut novel, I thought it was fantastic, but I genuinely did. I no, think I, think, I, I think that's almost irrelevant. It's just, a, it's just a superb read, I think. Yeah, yeah. so that's really one of our joint favourites. And then we have The Pisces by Melissa Broder, which I've been dreading talking to you about, because <laughs> I think it's <laughs> Don't know vulgar. why. <laughs> um, uh, and this is about a woman who, after a relationship breakup, ends up having to go away, have therapy, and starts having... A re well, it's not a relationship, once that well, a sexual relationship with a merman. Yeah, well, I. You see, it's interesting that you comment on its vulgarity. Oh, I think it is because You've it's no more vulgar. Then. No, but there are. Well, I've read at least half of it. And you got to the bit where she's what, that's what I find is interesting. I can't remember. You would know. But what's interesting is there's also vulgarity in Silence of the Girls. There is. You know, no, there is, because there's rape. But it, it's, as... it's, it's to do with the character, isn't it? It's not just... Well, it's also the writing, I think. What's I think happening? For me, do you think it's too sensational? This feels voyeuristic. Yes. And it feels like yeah, I've written this that. because I want people to buy it because it's controversial. And But also what I don't get is it's designed to be a comedy. And I don't, I didn't find it funny. I actually it, found it very mean-spirited to other women. Right. I mean, there were moments, but I can't remember why, that made me smile towards the beginning. I actually found the first few chapters quite There's a few bits where she takes the mickey out of, of relationships, but also takes the mickey out of um, therapy. Yeah. But, but in doing so, she's actually quite detrimental to women. Yeah. And um, there's quite a lot of fat shaming. There's quite a lot. Yes, of, there is. And I, did, I yes, just think that's not my cup of tea. Mm, women no, being think... mean to women as a joke doesn't quite work for me. No. So. No, and I would concur with that. And then we have Milkman by Anna Burns, which Annie and I have read so far, um, and I've talked about that quite a lot on this channel, so you know my thoughts on it, and the fact that when I read it, I really enjoyed it, I don't really, it's not stuck with me in the way I think other books I would like, well no, the great, my favourite books have stuck with me, mm. is how I put it, um, and also I think, what I love about it is that it takes something, you feel like you're reading a dystopic novel with this woman who's being watched because she may or may not be having this affair with this Milkman, and then you realise it's set in the Troubles, and actually this is the past. Mm. And so it plays really cleverly with what you perceive as being sort of futuristic sci-fi behaviour that's actually been and gone and kind of gone unchallenged or unnoticed in some ways. Anyway, then we have Freshwater by Aquaki Emezi, which is the book that caused the most controversy because Aquaki Emezi is the first non-binary author to be on the long list. Mm. I really loved this book, partly because there was a few segments about what it must be like to be non-binary. The writing just totally mm. blew my mind. So I really wanted to like it, you know, I wanted to, and, and I thought, again, I thought some of the writing was lovely, but it, it was written, a lot of it was written in the second person, wasn't mm. it? Well, it's and because, I, we should say, the main character, Ada, has spirits living within her, yeah. um, lots of them, Yeah, and, and we I, hear from three. I, I think it was a, a really brave 
um, viewpoint to, to take, and I can see exactly why it's written in the second person, but I personally found it very difficult to read for that reason, it just grated on me. So I think it was more to do with that than anything else that I, I just didn't, I didn't really get into it. Yeah, I just found it, yeah, I found it, I, I sort of felt I was drifting a bit. And did you find the bits that I mentioned, that non-binary, the sort of bit where she's talking about what it is? Yes, I did, and well, I found that fascinating. I she, and the I, character I, I think, is initially a she, and then there's all this otherness that happens. Yeah, but I didn't feel it helped me to understand it any better. It didn't sort of shine a light on it particularly for me. I mean, oh, that's you know, really interesting. Yeah, I, I, I yeah. I can't see what the next book is because no one's got the foot in the way. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> and the next one is Ordinary People by Diane Evans, which I am that far in tail. <laughs> <laughs> but you are. Oh, yeah, no, what I've, she's read, done. I've read over half of it and really she's upset him because I've turned, turned the page. page to... This is your copy, so we can forgive you. This um, is one that has become a lot of people's favourites. I know Lauren, mm. Lauren in the books absolutely loves this. And it's about two different couples. Um, around the time that Barack Obama is inaugurated, in fact, that's yeah, how it starts yeah, the party. Is, yeah. um, and then I think it's how those couples then, their relationships basically fall apart. Mm. Um, I've not got very far, so I can't really say very much about it. Mum, over to you. Yeah, well, I'm finding it... I find, I'm, very London-centric, you were saying. Yeah, that's exactly... My, my problem with it is that it's Lungo, Lung, Lungo, London-centric. <laughs> lungo centric And I'm also finding it very sad. I just feel really um yeah i felt sort of overwhelmed and and it, it was making me feel quite low reading it no really yeah and i think that's partly showing that the book is very successful because i think the situation that these characters in is 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 desperately sad because it is ordinary mm. um you know the sort of the, the the marital problems that they're going through are are very ordinary and and you know there are thousands of people experiencing what they're experiencing i suspect and I think that's why it made me feel <laughs> really sad. Um, and that's why I've sort of stopped reading it briefly. I will go back to it. And I, I, I'm not, you know, I, I think it's a really interesting book. And I suspect when I go back to it, um, I might feel a little bit more positive. It's not one to read for any of the holidays. I think that's sun. the problem. I think perhaps I shouldn't have chosen to read it while we were here. And I think the, the, the personalities are very real. Um, and, and I think probably the things that I'm saying are a testament to her writing rather than otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the Ordinary People. Next up is Swan Song by Kaylee greenberg Jeffcott, which is a tale of Jim Capote when he is going through um, writer's block and he decides to share all of the secrets of his female friends, um, which he writes a new novel. This, I thought, was going to be Simon Catnip. It hasn't quite worked for me. You love it. I really loved it. I found it fascinating. I knew not, almost nothing about Truman Capote at all. And that whole idea of his, the gossip and the waspishness and his personality, but also that whole world of, you know, Jackie Anassis and, and all those film stars. Um, it's very glitzy, it's very glamorous, but it's also, you know, there are some quite gruesome scenes in it. And that whole idea of having information about people and friendship and how you use that information, I, I really, really enjoyed it. And it made me, I ordered, um, oh my goodness, mine's gone blank. In Cold Blood? Yeah, because Which I've only ever read, amazing. I've only read Breakfast at Tiffany's before. So yeah, I've, I've got that at home ready to read now. It made me really want to read that book. I and think that the ear is totally brought to life. And yeah. I think Truman Capote is totally brought to life. My, my problem was I was very confused by which swan was which mm. quite a long time because some people have multiple names, nicknames, yeah. etc. What I loved was when the chorus, because they are speaking as a chorus, which yeah, I really they are. Liked, yeah, they are. When they're telling you various moments in Truman's life, but different scenarios that he's told them. So all the lies he's spun yeah, around yeah. one, I thought that was brilliant. My problem was when you then go into each individual's story that he has some uh, part of, which becomes part of his gossip, Yeah. because of the choral voice, they all started to sound very samey. Right. So I couldn't yeah. sometimes, but also I began to feel like, well, another one's gonna have a husband cheat on them. Oh, there we go. But in some ways it didn't matter. I think that was part of the point. That, that his effect on all of them was dev pretty devastating. It was, but I think for me it felt very cyclical. Yeah, but also I think yeah. as well one thing, and this is this is where I think Kelly did a very good job, is the fact that 
she's so immersed in Truman's world and clearly loves it so much but sometimes I felt like you just needed a tiny bit of distance yeah. for someone who was new to that world to be able right, to get okay. I felt like I was in a suit that was a bit too tight yeah, you were just plunged and I just into wanted it. to kind of be a bit loosened mm. up and a bit freer with it I've gone to that point where I've left it at home but um, I'm reading like 30 pages a day and that seems to have broken that slightly I thought I thought I loved what she had to what she was trying to say I think about fame mm. You know, and, and that need to be watched and looked at and talked about. I think, I thought that was... I don't know what that's like. <laughs> I'm no. filming myself. <laughs> Three times Indeed. a week, what you doing? <laughs> um, anyway, let's move on to the next one, which is An American Marriage, which we have both read. This is about Roy and Celestial, who very early on in their marriage, um, Roy is arrested for a crime he has not committed. Mm. We know that. Celestial knows that, however, he still goes to prison, and then it's how their relationship goes from there. Mm. Some of the writing in this book was so beautiful. Mm. Um, there's a series of letters that they write to each other when he's first in prison. Well, actually, no, it goes throughout his whole prison period, yeah, actually. It and it's a very good way of condensing five years. Mm. It's brilliantly done. Mm. Um, but when he's saying, I don't write, I don't know how to write love letters, I did this few years of love letter, I did that, that literally made me cry. Mm. I thought it was wonderfully done. And mm. um, I do have one slight slight quibble with it again which is that i felt that wasn't it? andre's perspective didn't need to yeah. be in the book i would have happily just mm. had roy and celestial yeah so i didn't mind that i mean i i again I, this was one i really loved really loved it and i loved it partly because it was perhaps the most plot driven of, mm, apart from maybe the serial killer and it really made me i mean you know i've read lots and lots of um fiction that looks at race in america um, but I felt this made me understand it in a slightly different way. Mm. I didn't feel like, oh, here we go again. I felt it was enriching my perspective. And what I thought was so clever about it was that the reader and Celestial, his wife, are in absolutely no doubt about his innocence. Mm. You know, it would, I thought that was a really clever and very simple thing to do. Um, yeah, I, I thoroughly really enjoyed it. And I, di I didn't have the problem that you had about... About it wasn't a massive like, problem, like I said, um, it was a small problem. Yeah, but I think I, that extra voice, I, I, I don't feel like it added mm. a vast amount. And I always come out of a book, well, when I'm reading something, I'm thinking, what's the author trying to add here? What's the difference? And I don't mm. feel like it changed his perspective particularly. I didn't feel like it... Well, except it gave you a sort of almost a onlooker's view. Almost. It did, but he's an onlooker with a Who's definite involved. Yes. Yeah, yeah. interest. Yeah. So therefore, again, it felt I would biased. rather have just been within there. Yeah. Because I think that's when, for me, it was its most powerful. But overall, I thought it was really, really brilliant. So that was very, very good. Um, then we have Number One Chinese Restaurant by Lillian Lee, which I think I'm about a third of the way through. I'm just, um, it's so average, I'm not even... Yeah, I mean, I did I did read it all. Um, and I, and I, you know, I, I can't say I didn't enjoy it. I did quite enjoy it. But I, again, I, I found it tame. That's a really good... I think, I, think I, think not, I didn't... You know, you know how people use the word, it's really nice. Yes. And well, it, except it wasn't. It's was quite dark. <laughs> well, no, but, but what I mean is, like, quite dark moments, reading something, you're like, well, this is quite nice. Yeah. And actually, for me, on a long list, I don't want a nice book. Mm. I want, like, a... I didn't care enough about the characters one way or the other. I think that was the problem, because I, I really enjoy reading books about people who are vile. I want to be either really empathising with a character or really despising them, and I just didn't feel that. I Either way, not not particularly. No. And they're not nice characters, but no. it's all done in a very nice style, yeah. which is quite an odd way to do it. I think if you're going to go for it, go for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's hard for that one. Um, then we have Bottled Goods by Sophie Van Leeuwen, which you brought on holiday with you, and you mm. just read. I really like this. Mm. I think one of the things I will say about it is one of its greatest strengths is also one of its possible weaknesses. Yeah. Which is that it's in flax fiction bites. In fact, we could have held that one up. Yeah. She's got it in her bedroom know, just I'm through sorry. there. Um, she couldn't be, she couldn't move too far from the balcony. Um, <laughs> yeah, so sorry, what was I saying? Yeah, about flash fiction. Um, and in, in some ways, because it's flash fiction, you can't quite delve as deeply into some of mm. the characters as you might like, but the plot flies. Yeah, and, and I think the characters are really well portrayed. I mean, I felt I knew them. I, I felt I really 
Yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't find. I wanted that to know. I wanted you want to, to know, know more about the relationship between her and her mother. Yes, but also yeah, a bit more maybe. about her aunt because there was this magical aunt yes. that brings in all this wonderful element of. Yes, it does. Because it uses a lot of Romanian sort of myths and folklore. There's one scene that Miriam talked about, which we won't show here, that made me cackle so mm. loudly. Mum's slightly worried. <laughs> if you've read it, <laughs> I am very know what nervous. If read especially it. as we have two cats. Um, but anyway. And I enjoyed the sort of the dark comedy in, mm. of it, but also it's some of it, and actually it's a common theme I think with a lot of these books, there's a lot that you read about trauma and yeah. there's a lot of violence. Yeah. And I think that is a common theme throughout the, the long list actually. Yeah. I, I really liked the setting as well. I liked the fact that it was a story set behind the Iron Curtain. Mm. Um, and again in, in Romania, which is a country that I again don't know an awful lot about. so. It was it was an interesting reminder of how recent um, that sort of political situation had, had been. Um, but no, I, th I thought it was a really. I like the fact that it was brief. I thought that was one of its strengths. I think just sometimes um, I wanted to go a yeah, little bit deeper. I, I think sometimes it's nice not to though, and almost leave that those backstories to your own imagination and sort of fill them out yourselves. Then, in your hands, oh, yeah. I haven't read any of this yet. I and mean, it's the one I'm most nervous about, it's Children by Valeria Lewis Ellis, it says. How are you getting on with this? Because you're that far in. Yeah, I, um, I, I wasn't totally committed to start with. Um, but the more I read it, the more I think it's probably quite an important book. The Lost Children are children who are trying to um, emigrate from Mexico through into America, so the whole sort of Trump and the wall, it's not referenced in the book so far anyway, um, but that that's who they are and um, I don't know whether it's something to do with American fiction because there are so many references to other books and other literature and whatever, I find that bogs me down slightly and I... And I is that in this a lot? Yeah, yeah, lots this is and lots her of references. English language book. Um, she's from Mexico, which yeah, I think is why yeah. the subject matter is what yeah. it is. But also at the same time, I think I don't know, a family, a very dysfunctional family, going well, to the they are they're on the moon for a holiday. Well, they're, it's work related as oh, well. Okay. Um, but but again, the marriage is struggling. Um, and what's really fascinating as well is that she refers to the two children who are her and her husband's children as the boy and the girl. And I don't know whether that's because she's trying to suggest that it's a universal story. Mm. Um, so that, so all the main characters are anonymous in a sense. But I, I am enjoying it more and more and there are some really lovely moments in it. Really lovely sort of uh, anecdotes and, uh, and it's quite philosophical I think. It's the sort of book you need to mull over. Okay. And I would say stick with it if you, if, you, if you sort of find it a bit much to start I was worried this was going to be pretentious. Yeah, well, I think, I think you famous... could argue that it is. What's become famous about this book is that there's a 16-page sentence, and that always mm. makes me go... But what excited me was, I was flicking through it, and I saw there were pictures, and there's, like, uh, study cases and all these other mm. kind of things. I quite like yes, it when people amazing. use different medium yeah. in books. So, yeah, yeah I'm quite, I'm quite yeah. eager to get to this one. Yeah. Well, I've got to read it. I've got to read it by the end of the weekend. Then we have Praise Song for the Butterflies, which Mum hasn't read yet, but mm. I've talked about on this channel already, which I thought... I don't want to say too much because you've not read it. Mm. Um, I thought the first two thirds were brilliant. Um, so that. Then we have uh, Circe by Madeline Miller, which my sister has been reading on this holiday and really, really loved. I really, really loved it. And this is obviously about Circe from classical myth. Um, yeah, and you haven't read it yet. No, I'm looking forward to reading it though. I know Miriam really enjoyed it. Yeah. She absolutely loved it. She did. She's now on Twitter. I'll link that down below. She <laughs> wants all of you following her. I'm intrigued particularly because Mum wasn't a massive fan of the Song of Achilles, no. which I loved so much. And actually, that was what made me got really weepy in the Pat Barker was when they got to the Patroclus and Achilles scene. Anyway, um, or section. I think this is great. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Really forward to then, the final two we don't have. One is Ghost War, which Mum hasn't read yet, but I think Mum's going to love for two reasons I particularly will like it. One, because it's about experimental archaeology. Oh. Exactly. Ooh. Job done. <laughs> um, and also because whilst it's about a family who go down south to this experimental, experimental archaeology, um, there's a clearly a big secret with them and there's quite a lot of dark tension and the right. book gets darker and darker Ooh, and darker as you read okay. it. But also it's really about North and South 
and the, oh, the divide yeah. between both culturally, class, all this kind of stuff. And it's really, really fascinating. And Sarah Mosters so much with so little. Mm. I really, really like that. And the final one, which we've both read and we both really, really like, is Normal People by Sally Rooney. What do you like about that most? I think I like the class divide um, and that conflict and the fact that it was a sort of modern take on, not Romeo and Juliet, that would be wrong it's to quite grand. that, but it's, sorry? It's quite grand to say that. Yeah, it is quite grand to She's say a new that, Shakespeare. That whole sort of, <laughs> no, I'm not saying that, but I think, again, it was very thoughtfully and sensitively written. I read it a long, well, I read it about a year ago, would it be? Could it be that long ago? Simon knows my, my memory for what I'm read. I've She's read made loads of notes I know, home, I know, because I, I get really absorbed in that world and then I move on to the next and, you know, but maybe it's age, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure that's not the case. Um, it was the way the relationship changed and altered that I thought was interesting. Yes, and I found it very believable. A lot of people yes. don't believe me, but no, actually... No, I found it really plausible. I think there are those people that you have relationships with that could go all sorts of different ways, mm. depending on mainly communication. And what I really, really love about Sally Rooney's writing, I haven't read Conversation with Friends yet, but what I've looked from this and Mr. Sally, which is a short story I've read of hers, she's so good at those missed moments where people don't say something or it's on the tip of their tongue or mm. and you as the reader can see yeah. the internal dialogue going on between or, or the intention or almost what's going like on in there almost like the pauses yeah things. but it's yeah. also a bit, it's, it gives you that almost ultra nosy effect yeah <laughs> you're yeah, just yeah, really yeah, yeah, yeah. Um and th there are a few bits with that book like I it's interesting I don't search for a perfect book I think if I read the perfect book I'd probably be a bit mm. um but um <laughs> My, my one call was that was that there's some stuff around Marianne's things she likes sexually that didn't kind of make sense in that book. Oh, okay. I didn't find that okay. that fitted for me. But again, that's a yeah, very small book. I don't remember. Book. Again, I don't remember. I think I'm that. a bit tough. You think you are a bit tough on books? No, I don't think you are. Possibly I think, a bit too I think, harsh. I think you're looking at it from. I try to look at it from all the angles, I think. Yeah. Anyway, um, but yes, that's another one that we both love. What are your favourites that you've read so far? If you How had to pick, like, favorites? well, there's going to be a short list of six. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not going to say right now. Oh, all right then. <laughs> well, just give us your top few. <laughs> I think that's really hard. There's, there's I think, mm, I don't know. Now watch him. This is your chance to be a judge next year. <laughs> don't be ridiculous. <laughs> Um, oh gosh, I think, I mean, I loved Silence of the Girls, as you know, but the Serial Killer book My was just serious, so yeah. refreshing and so different to anything I've read before, I think, um, and and joyous and shocking and, yeah, and I loved An American Marriage as well. I think my favourites currently, because I haven't read them all yet, mm -hmm. are probably remembered there is something about My Sister the Serial Killer that I just think is a, it's mm. just a great book. It's one of those books that you would give to everyone that gets so many different things out of it and it's, mm. you can have so many great discussions about it. Mm. Um, I think An American Marriage is going to be one that grows and grows and grows on me. Right, the more that's interesting. space I have from it. Yeah. Um, Cersei I really, really love, but mm. that was going to be a given anyway, I think. Um, I'm trying to think of my other favourite. Oh, and Normal People. I absolutely love yes, Normal of People. Course, yeah. um, and Ghost, Ghost Wall, actually. I think it's pretty fantastic. But I'll make my final decision on Sunday, as will my mum. And you'll be able to see it on my Instagram. And you'll be able to see it on mum's Twitter. And uh, you can let us know what you think in the comments down below and what you'd like to see, what you've read so far, what you've enjoyed, what you've not enjoyed. And I'll be back at one minute past midnight on Monday to tell you what the shortlist actually is. And then me and mum will be talking about which we think we could predict as our winner before the winner is announced when we'll be doing a little vlog at the party. It's very exciting. Oh. But for now, it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from me. Bye. <laughs> Bye. I never waved, I just waved. Oh. You brought out the wave in me. Oh my goodness. <laughs>